Welcome to the Little Athreos Achievers. Hope you're excited to be mischievous today. As far as opening hand goes, I love this. If we had one more dual source or just one more land in general, um, I would keep on this, but it does not look that good. So let's go ahead and mulligan. And yeah, I like this a lot. We've got authority. We've got anguish and making. Man, yes, I like this hand. That is beautiful. Uh, very seldom do you mulligan down to six and like your opening hand better than your first hand. Well, I mean, like if we had an extra land, that would have been a great opening hand, but I'm glad we mulligan. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I was going to put that on the bottom. Most of the time, if you're going to mulligan down to six, you don't like your opening hand. That's why you mulligan. But I just meant from like a card point perspective, um, I like what we've got going on in our hand. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Welcome to the little Athreos Achievers. Hope you're excited. We've got the... Uh, Hope we get some good achievers going on the battlefield. We're playing Daxos, the official, uh, I guess, daycare keeper of the little Athros achievers, however you want to word that. Um, let's go and lead off with Marsh Flats. Yeah, let's go and get down authority of the councils. I, I like going for that. Um, creatures are going to enter the battlefield tap. That way, if they have some sort of weird haste shenanigans, we don't have to worry about that. Let's go and get down Scrubland. Uh, let's go and go for authority. And then let's go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we are playing Daxos. Uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you get a, an experience counter. Then for a three mana activation, uh, create a white and black spirit creature token, little Anthros Achievers, uh, that says uh, this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of experience counters that you have. Uh, let's go ahead and get down. We can't go for Ancient Tomb on Tutor. I think that might be a good option. Let's get down to Ancient Tomb. Let's go ahead and go for Idolic Tutor. That way we can search our library for some sort of enchantment card that kind of helps us uh, get some good Daxos going. Let's get this popped out and see exactly what we want to search up. There we go. Make this a little bit easier for us to see. Okay, let's see what we want to grab. Man, I, th I think I like Anointed Procession on this one. That's going to amplify the Athreos Achievers. That makes them really happy. So let's grab Anointed Procession, and then uh, let's go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. So next turn, we are looking at getting down Fetid Heath. Uh, that will allow us to get down Daxos, and then we can really start casting some of our enchantments and ending up with some uh, really good board state going. Now, one of the fun things about Extinguish All Hope, and especially in a deck like this, is this is a one-sided board wipe. Destroy all non-enchantment creatures. So that's definitely going to allow us to uh, get down some good Athreos Achievers and uh, spread the beautiful word of Athreos, because that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, let's get down Fetid Heath. Uh, let's go and go for Scrubland. <laughs> the Athreos Achievers are so good at that. Uh, let's go and get the uh, Dual Source down. Let's go for Ancient Tomb. Let's go and get down Daxos. There we go. It'll be one colorless mana. And uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Playing against Captain Sisse. Uh, tap, search your library for a legendary card, reveal that card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Now, if you've never played against Captain Sisse, um, one of the things that made it really good recently, and it's always been a pretty good commander to play, but with the inclusion of historic cards and Planeswalkers being legendary, um, it's pretty much just makes Captain Sisse is just a really good target for pretty much anything. In fact, if we want to get the commander tax going, I think what we might end up doing is go for Anguish Unmaking on Captain Sisse. That way they don't get the opportunity to untap with any sort of uh, good stuff. Drawn to Vampiric Tutor, too. Um, let's go and get down... Yeah, let's go and get down Urborg. I think we're okay with that. Uh, let's go and go for Anguish Unmaking. And let's go and tap Ancient Tomb down for one black mana. Uh, let's go for Anguish on Making on Captain Sisse. Yeah, we want to keep that, keep her off the battlefield. Uh, let's go and swing it with Daxos. Swinging it for two, that's going to put them down to a 28. That will be two total commander damage. And then uh, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, as far as what we want to grab with Vampiric Tutor, um, we do have a couple different options. Probably might end up going for just a cheaper enchantment just to get our experience counters up. Uh, that way we can really take advantage of Anointed Procession and up with a ton of tokens on the battlefield. Opponent's going to go for Oracle. I guess Spot Removal could be something that we want to go for. Let's go and always yield to the authority of the councils. And let's get their, uh, their library popped up. So that will be a Plains on the battlefield. We're looking at a Johnny coming down sometime soon. You know, Vampiric Tutor on Oblivion Ring wouldn't be that bad. Especially if we're going to get some sort of Planeswalkers going. So let's go go for Vampiric Tutor. Yeah, we need to be careful with these uh, the stuff that we're searching up. But we still want to grab at least some sort of enchantment to uh, kind of keep us online. So let's go and grab Oblivion Ring. Where are you? There you are. Grab Oblivion Ring. I would love to know how many times I've cast Oblivion Ring in my uh, magic career. I, I don't know. I think that'd be pretty cool. 
I wish Magic Online had stats like that. I'd love to dig through that and come up with an awesome, cool... So maybe there's some way to... Well, I don't know. That'd be a lot of data to keep up with, but might be kind of fun. All right, so we did get Riki swinging it across. He's getting a little, a little feisty swinging it across. Um, do we want to go... Let's go and get down Windswept Teeth. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to give us six total mana. And Daxos, unfortunately, is not an enchantment creature. So if we go for Extinguish All Hope, that's not going to help us a ton. I think for the plus one. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go and go for Anointed Procession. And that puts us on next turn being able to at least kind of go for um, some sort of... Uh, some sort of extra activation, once, especially once we get down Oblivion Ring. And let's go and get down Ancient Tomb. Uh, we get an Experience Counter. Let's go for Anointed Procession. And then let's go and push in for two. Yeah, we're okay with that. We're going to push in for two. Every little point of damage matters here at the Church of Athreos. And then anything else, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. So, uh, we do need to kind of keep track of uh, what our opponent does have going. Um, sorry, I always open my drawer, and I realize that my desk drawer, it makes a little bit of noise. Uh, so, they've got a Johnny in the hand, and then we have Return to Dust on top of their library. So I'm going to try to keep track of what they've got going on. That way we don't do some sort of sequencing error. Now, the only downside is Return to Dust is definitely going to be brutal for us. Um, if they go for that, that's going to get rid of Anointed Procession and Authority of the Councils. Um, but I don't really think there's much we can do about that. So um, we'll see. We at least know that it's coming. So we're going to try to go for as many activations as possible. Now, with us having just one experience counter... Um, We'll probably just end up straight up just going for double activations off of... No, excuse me, with them going for Riki, that's going to allow them to draw into that card. So that's going to... Ooh, yeah, that's brutal. Now, we can still bounce back with the uh, Extinguish All Hope. It's going to be a good board wipe for us. But uh, playing against uh, Green White Super Friends... Yeah, that's always... It's definitely interesting. All right, so they will end up going for Return to Death. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> that stings the nostrils. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's going to get it. Uh, it's going to crack Windswept Heath. We'll go and grab a uh, grab one of our dual sources. That way we don't just shock it in. And we'll probably end up going for Extinguish All Hope for next turn. Well, if we want to, we can get two more activations going. But, oh man, I really wanted to get that... Uh, that... Uh, <laughs> Anote Procession going. That would have been really nice with uh, Daxos. All right, so I'm going to go for the Johnny activation. And let's go and crack Windswept Teeth. Let's go and grab that... Uh, Grab that God the Shrine. Not going to pay two life. Nope. Have that come into play, and it will be allow them to swing in for five if they want to, but more than likely we'll see Mother of Runes kind of hold back on a protection duty. All right, so they got them swinging in for four, so puts us down to 18. And then we draw into planes. Let's go and get down planes. <sighs> yeah, and that's going to be extinguish all hope, destroy non enchantment creatures. That's going to get rid of what they've got going on. That does leave Gideon on the battlefield. I think we're okay with it at this point right now. Yeah, let's go and swing in for two at our opponent. Maybe they don't block with Mother of Runes. Yeah, because that kind of puts them in this weird position to where they might be worried about some sort of removal spell in response to Mother of the Runes. We should be able to get in for a chip shot for two damage with Daxos. All right, there we go. Hit our opponent on the knee. That's going to be six total commander damage. If you came here for a commander damage win with Daxos, we are on track for that. <laughs> Hope you're excited. Um, let's go ahead and get that. It always makes you laugh sometimes with just how much you can just kind of get some commander damage going sometimes with creatures that are totally not meant to be commander damage. All right. So we're going to have Extinguish All Hope, Destroy All Non-Enchantment Creatures. Um, if you're new to magic with Mother of Runes, target creature gains protection. Um, best way to kind of remember protection is debt, is destruction, enchantment, block, and then targeting. Now with Extinguish All Hope, um, it's destroy all non-enchantment creatures. If they give Mother Runes protection from black, uh, since we're not targeting it, that's not going to count. So that's why Mother Runes gets blown up or why they don't go for a Mother Runes activation in response to that is because they have protection from black, but it needs to be targeted. It needs to be some sort of spot removal, something like that. With Extinguish All Hope, it, hey, it's just saying, hey, we're going to destroy all creatures. And Mother Runes walks up to the front desk at Extinguish All Hope and says, hey, I have protection from black. Extinguish All Hope says, well, doesn't count. Sorry. Go to the back of the line. <laughs> all right, opponent's going to get down Captain Sisse. And then with the Johnny, um, we'll end up going for Oblivion Ring on a Johnny just to kind of get a little bit of a reset. Uh, now with Daxus going back to the command zone, let's see how much mana we've got. Maybe we can do both in the same turn. Ooh, Omnixilus. 
I think I like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So unfortunately, we can't go for Obnixilis and go for Oblivion Ring. So, you know, let's go ahead and go for Obnixilis. Yeah, I like that, because that's going to be five mana. That's going to allow us to keep Captain Sisse off the battlefield. They've only got two cards in the hand, so whatever those two cards are, we're okay with that. Let's get down Omnixil. Let's go for the minus three ability, and hopefully that should allow us to start drawing some cards. So <laughs> we've got, uh, this is what everybody came for, Captain Sisse versus Daxos, and it's the Battle of the Planeswalkers. All right, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. But this is what makes Commander fun sometimes, is uh, ending up in these weird sub-games. Or it's a Johnny versus uh, Mixos. But thankfully with the Johnny, even if they get just a little bit close to that ultimate, uh, we still have Oblivion Ring to uh, take care of a Johnny. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, depending on what they tap out for, we'll kind of see what they go for. Sigarda. Okay. Flying and Hexproof. Um, definitely go for Oblivion Ring on a Johnny because we don't want that to happen. Okay, so whenever Necrom Necrom Necromancer's Covenant enters the battlefield... That's going to give us a really good way to bounce back from that. And that's going to put them on going for a Johnny. All right, so if they go for minus three on a Johnny, Sagarda is going to have double strike. That's going to 12. That's going to put us down to six. We have Lifelink with Necromancer's Covenant. And we get to draw a card. Yeah, I think I like going for Covenant. Let's do this. Let's go for the plus one Omnix. Let's draw a card. That's going to put us down to 17. And that's going to give us... Uh, can we still get that down? Now, I think one, two. Now, we have to take damage if we want to do that. So let's just straight up just go for Necromancer's uh, Covenant. We could have gotten down Ancient Tomb and gotten down Signet, but with Double Strike looming from a Johnny, uh, we're okay with this. So we're going to go for Necromancer's Covenant from Target Player's Graveyard. Um, definitely going to target our opponent because that's going to give us three zombies. And uh, yeah, because we have no creature cards in our graveyard. It's not going to be good. All right, so we got the uh, old school zombie tokens on the battlefield, uh, making uh, the uh, making Athreos really proud at this point right now. And then hopefully our opponent's going to be uh, kind of anticipating that a uh, Johnny ultimate, and we'll be able to go for Oblivion Ring uh, just in time. You know, even if they do have an answer for Oblivion Ring, at least that's going to reset the counters uh, once a Johnny enters the battlefield. Opponent's going to go for Gideon, and that's going to be. Let's get Captain Sisse just pop down just a little bit, especially with them getting Planeswalkers. We're going to put her over there. Uh, so with uh, Gideon, destroy during opponent's next turn, creatures uh, attack Gideon if able. Uh, minus two, destroy target tapped creature. And then with uh, a Johnny, they end up actually going for the plus one. Uh, put a plus one counter on it, so they will be able to swing in for seven. And the good thing about, um, at least Omnixilis is, excuse me, she has Hexproof, so we can't target her. Well, I'm actually swinging up Nixilis too, so I'll take that. Uh, we can still swing in at Gideon and kind of keep his life total down too, which is something we'll probably end up going for. Uh, Safi, Eric's daughter. Okay. So let's see what we draw into. Draw into Blind Obedience. Now, if we get down Daxos, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're still stuck on 7 mana, unfortunately. We definitely need to take care of uh, a Johnny. No. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and go for Oblivion Ring. Yeah, let's go for Oblivion Ring. We're going to exile a Johnny because if they just go, they simply just go for the ultimate or they go for the minus three and that's going to close the game out. So let's go and go for Johnny. At this point right now, do we want to swing in with the zombie tokens? Uh, yeah, I guess we go and swing in. Well, Gideon's going to be a 6-6, six, six, which is not exactly what we want to see. And I don't think technically that blind obedience that it enters the battlefield. They can still use a minus two. You know, let's go and swing in at Gideon because we want to try to keep as much as possible. We want to try to keep Gideon under control. So I'm okay. Let's go and swing all the creatures in at Gideon. If they want to block with Safi, they certainly can. If not, then we'll at least be able to knock down Gideon. And that's going to force them to go for the minus two. At least get the loyalty down really low. Okay. So I'm going to put Gideon down to four. I was going to get down uh, Orzhov Signet. And they'll be able to get down Blind Obedience. Um, let's say that we can somehow. We are at 23, so we've got a little bit of life game uh, to kind of bounce back from that. Um, anything else, let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. So 
The blind obedience, whenever they turn Gideon into a creature, I don't think it's going to enter the battlefield tab. I think it's still going to be technically a creature. Uh, but the good thing is that if they do end up going for Captain Sisse again, it's going to enter the battlefield tapped. And uh, with us getting down Signet, that's finally going to allow us to go for Daxos and take advantage of I know, unfortunately, we had to cast a lot of enchantments, but um, that's kind of the name of the game. We had to get those down pretty quick. Now, we might... We'll see. We might be able to kind of stabilize in some form or fashion if we get down Daxos and go for a few more enchantment activations. Uh, we definitely want to find some sort of answer for Gideon and some sort of answer for Sagarda because next turn um, we're going to be not in a good position. Uh, we can at least block on Gideon uh, with one of our zombie creatures. But, ooh, and especially with uh, Mangara. That's not going to be good for us either. We're down to Righteous Aura. Well, that's something... Yeah, let's go and get down to Daxos. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, let's go and get down to Daxos. Well, if we get down Righteous Aura... Let me see. So we get down Righteous Aura... Either they're Basically, if we get down Righteous Aura, that's going to allow them to go for Mang... That'll be a perfect thing for them to go with Man uh, Mangara. But at least we'll go and force... I, I guess if we're playing to our outs, we have to force some sort of action. But Sigard is going to have Hexproof, so there's nothing we can literally do about Hexproof that's not going to stop it. Yeah, let's just go for Daxos. I'm um, sorry, for a second I thought that we could get down Righteous Aura and stop Sigarda, but I forgot that she has Hexproof, and so that's not really going to help us out. So uh, let's go and go for Daxos. That's going to put us down to 8 and still allow us to get an extra token on the battlefield. Yeah, that's going to be pretty cutting it really close with being 7-7, seven, seven, but... Um, we need to get some stuff moving. So let's go ahead and pay two life on this. So it's going to put us down to eight, and then that'll still allow us to go for a Daxos activation of getting down a creature on the battlefield. Uh, not going to pay for that extort trigger at this point right now. Uh, next turn, we'll try to kind of bounce back from that. Uh, but with our lifelink creatures... So let's say we swing in with double zombies. It puts them down to 20. We gain four. It puts us back up to 12. And then we have no creatures to block on Gideon or Mangara. We can get down one Daxos creature. Yeah, let's do it like this. Let's go and swing in with the two zombie tokens. Yeah, because if we swing in at Gideon, that's going to get rid of Gideon. They swing in the air for seven. That puts us down to one. They exile Daxos, then we can still make a token in response to that. Make sure it's not a sorcery speed. Yeah, we can do that. All right, so let's go and swing in at uh, Gideon. So I had to kind of think about that turn for a second. All right, so we do take care of Gideon. Um, we do gain that life off of these zombie tokens. And then, um, yeah, we definitely, we want some tokens on the battlefield instead of Sigarda. Hopefully we can outrace Sigarda. <laughs> uh, it's not looking good, but we certainly can. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have access to eight mana. So if we do hit the land drop, that will allow us to get down one more land and go for a few more activations off that. Ooh. Oh, Elish Norn. Okay. So even if we go for a Daxos activation in response to this, not going to do anything. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, we get that down, it's simply just going to kill it. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's going to send everybody back to the command zone. So at this point right now, we need to get into Damnation. We get into some sort of board wipe to uh, kind of clean this board up. We'll get rid of Sagarda, Mangara, and Elish Norn. Um, the only downside is that there still is an activation of Exile Mangara and Target Permanent. Um, that could be, you know, I was about to say, they could go for something like Oblivion Ring. And then we'll bring back Gideon. And, uh-oh, now that I think about it. Yeah, if they go for Gideon... Excuse me, they go for a Johnny and give it double strike. Yeah, that's going to close the game out. Never mind. All right, so we will not have an extra turn. I got uh, wrapped up. But I, either way, I don't think there's much we could do on that, especially with them getting down Elish Norn. It was kind of an uphill battle with Mangara. Okay, it's going to put us down to three. And then on the uh, regular damage, that will close the game out. Let's see what we're going to rip into. But definitely, oh, Path to Exile. That would have been nice. Toxic Deluge. Well, good game to our opponent. That happens sometimes. But um, unfortunately, one day... <laughs> I think this is Little Athreos Achievers, uh, Little Athreos Achievers video number three, and I have yet to get a good video uh, where we get a lot of the Athreos Achievers on the battlefield. But one day we will. So keep playing to Athreos. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.